Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Estate Success Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Ingersoll, and you're in for a great show today. Hey, by the way, thank you to everybody who's been uh, jumping into the registrations for our upcoming boot camp in a few months. You can go to InvestorTrainingSummit.com and make sure you're, you're on the list and you got your seat reserved. Um, also, thanks to everybody who shares our content, leaves us comments, emails me, texts me, and tells me how much the show is, has made a positive impact on your life. That's what it's all about. And today we've got an incredible show um, where we're going to talk about a journey of buying rental properties um, <clears throat> that I can attest to because rental properties, more than anything else I've done in real estate, has created um, true freedom for, for myself as well. So if you're flipping and wholesaling and doing all those fun things, that's all good, but it's all transactional income. Do one deal and you don't ever get paid again. You buy a rental property, you get paid multiple times multiple ways and for many, many years. That's why um, buying rental property has made a huge impact on me and it's why I'm excited about today's show. So Michael Zuber, welcome to Real Estate Success. Nice to have you along. Thank you, Jim. It's very, very uh, good introduction. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, flipping so, and wholesaling is a job uh, and you get, yes. you get some nice checks, no question, but it's certainly a job. It is, it is. Now, you, if you're able to take those checks and, and save up a few of them and buy a rental property cash, you know, with cash and never refi it, and then you're going to have a lot of cash flow. Take your cash, create the cash flow. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> but then you don't get the leverage, so it's That's all true. good. Um, so tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. What's, uh, what, do, what should we know about you? Yeah, I would say to sort of, you know, sort of crawl into this conversation, um, obviously, uh, Michael Zuber, which you shared, I, I live in the Bay Area, uh, part of California, which, which just means by default, I have to be in technology. Uh, it's just <laughs> what we do out here. Uh, I've been in technology my, my whole career, uh, actually on the sales side, uh, although I was an accountant uh, by training out of college. Um, yeah, it's interesting going from accounting to sales. But um, yes. where I think is important is, you know, we started real estate investing, buy and hold uh, 15 or 16 years ago now. Um, and I think there's a couple of things that are important about the beginning. First and foremost, I, I, you know, now I'm trying to help busy professionals get started, but people don't realize how busy I was when I started, right? I had a job that was a traveling sales job. So I was in a hotel room at least a hundred nights a year. Wow. Uh, I traveled, I traveled 200,000 miles a year because I had a worldwide job. Um, we didn't come from money, right? I, my, both my parents were in the military, high school graduates. Uh, so I didn't come from money. We, we started this journey of 175 units with a whopping $40,000, which maybe is more than some, but probably a lot less than many. Um, you know, so that's that, you know, and I had nobody in real estate. I had no special connections. You know, I didn't, I didn't come to this with a, a head start, right? I started where, where most of the listeners probably are um, just with a deep desire and a hunger to get started. Uh, as opposed to some assist from a grandparent or aunt or uncle. So you started off in technology. Um, so did I, by the way, because I was an electrical engineer and worked my way through corporate America and all that garbage too. Uh, <laughs> how did you start to like come to the point where you thought maybe real estate is what will lead you out, out of corporate America over the long term? Uh, I had a uh, particularly bad month of uh, stock trading uh, back in like 2001, 2002, right? I was, you know, I was this accountant guy with an MBA that thought I could solve Wall Street and did pretty well for a while and, and had a couple of 48 hours where I lost six figures and realized that that was just a big casino and uh, needed to stop that and, you know, walked away with the 40 grand and, and, and had to go to the bookstore and find another way because I, I always wanted, I just knew that I couldn't work for the quote unquote, the man for, for 50 years, like my, my parents had done. Right. And um, real estate was the only answer because I'm not an athlete, I'm not a singer, I'm not an artist, I'm not an inventor. And the, the, it, it, the list got kind of short and, and real estate was really the answer. And I just, I, I grabbed hold and, and never let go. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So in what year was that? Uh, 2002, 2003. All right, so that's before, before we had YouTube. Oh yeah. Sir. Facebook. You know, there were some forums out there, but not a lot. It's back when Walden Bookstore was still around. You know what I mean? It, exactly. <laughs> so, I, I, I remember the old days of 2002, believe me. So I understand. It was a lot more difficult to get information back then than it is today. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I meant when I said I literally drove to a bookstore and went shelf by shelf going, what can I do? I just had this, this desire to, um, you know, get out of the rat race or whatever you want to call it. And, um, real estate was the only answer. Uh, and that was before Rich Dad Poor Dad as well, which talks about getting out of the rat race. But do you remember any of the books that had an early impact on what you were trying to do? Yeah, the, the, the one book that I got that sort of made me really solidify was actually written in the 60s mm. uh, by William Nickerson. Nick, okay. I may be mispronouncing that. It was how, you, how he turned $1,000 into a million dollars. Um, it's since been republished a bunch of times, you know, one to three million, one to five. But I actually got an original copy uh, oh. or first, first printing of the how he r- turned a thousand dollars into a million dollars. And real quick in his story, he was he was a full time employee at the phone company uh, and was up in Reddington, California, I believe, and, and just documented his whole journey in the 60s. Now, his price points were pretty low. It was like five grand and six grand. And but still, it was a story. I could intelligently in my accounting brain see work. Uh, and, and that was very moving. So that's a great book. And I, and I haven't read it and I love to read. Do you like to read? Absolutely. I mean, I have the bookshelf right behind me. I'm not sure if it's yeah, in the shot right, or not. Yeah. But. I, love to read. I haven't read that one. But another really good friend of mine, um, Dr. David Phelps, also credits that book in helping him when, when he was in dental school. Yeah. And, and it really had an impact on his journey as well. Um, to go into real estate and leave leave the world of dentistry. All right, so that book had a, had a big impact. It showed like the journey. So yeah, it showed me what was possible. Of, yeah, and it, that was like the beginning of your journey, right? Yes, correct. How did you get your first house? What did that look like? And yeah, so we, um, you know, again, right? This is this is just embarrassing sometimes. So uh, <laughs> all the other books that I read talked about you had to invest thirty minutes from where you lived. Right. You remember that story? Um, and unfortunately, if you lived in the Bay Area where I live, nothing has made sense as a cash flow rental probably in 30 or 40 years. Um, so nothing made sense. But lo and behold, I was determined and we spent 52 weekends looking for that magic house that made sense or so condo or uniform, whatever. Isn't it? Yeah. And it, it just they don't exist. It didn't happen. Right. I remember being depressed around the kitchen table going honey, what do we do? Do we, do we go back to the stock market? Right. We, we had an okay run there for a little while. We got kind of stupid at the end and yeah, it ended badly, but I'm not finding it. Right. It's not making sense. And she looks at me and goes, why are we only looking at 30 minutes? What's, what's why I'm like, duh. So we start looking wider and wider in California. And we ultimately found a city called Fresno, California, which is two and a half hours away. It, it the numbers made sense. We bought our first house for, it was 107 grand. It was 1818 North drive East. Um, we rented for 1095 wow. and, um, you know, we put 20 K down and it, it just, it's like, Oh, it works. We got something. <laughs> so you had an asset and it was cash flowing in California mm-hmm. and, and you thought this is good. Maybe we should try it again. Yeah. Maybe we should try it again. And, and if you remember the time that I'm investing in starting in 03, 04, um, you know, we, we had that 40 grand, which I've mentioned twice uh, now, so we could buy, we basically bought two houses with the cash pile we had. Yep. Uh, then as time went by, uh, if you go back and look at the history, Fresno had an incredible appreciation, like 30%. Wow. Um, so we did a cash out refi on both of those first two to buy two more. Yep. Uh, then I got creative and borrowed against my 401k and got another one. And, um, you know, another year and a half went by and we did cash out refis on the other one to get, you know, more. And, um, you know, we, we sort of got through 2007 with eight, eight um, properties, uh, at which point we couldn't buy anymore because my accounting brain wouldn't let me because they were too expensive, Yeah. right? Just for example, that house on Norris Drive, you'll see that we sold, if you go to Zillow, for like 264. The problem is it's still rented for 1095. Right. <laughs> it made sense at 107. It didn't make sense at 264 or 265 or whatever we sold it at. So what we did... Um, is we spent a year and a half doing 1031 exchanges. Oh, wow. We were, we were like, Hey, these houses don't make sense. They're, you know, we can't buy anymore. So we might as well do something. So we, we started 1031 exchanging into fives and tens and 18 unit buildings. So we preserved a whole bunch of frankly, artificial equity. Uh, yeah. And we went from eight to 80, um, you know, about an 18 month window, no new capital, right? It, it was all 1031 exchange money. And tax free. 
and tax free. Not a That's bad thing. A nice, so, I mean, think about just the, the pieces of real estate investing you just hit on. You know, you buy for the long term, you buy for cash flow, um, you got depreciation all those years, you leveraged them, you pulled cash out, your equity grew. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you exchange them in a 1031 tax free into, I mean, you're almost like playing Monopoly. It was the, uh, you know, looking back on it, I wish I could tell you, I thought of this in the beginning. I didn't. It was the whole greenhouses, the red hotels. That's yeah. what we did. That's exactly yeah. the picture I saw when you described that. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish it, I would have known that in the beginning, but I'll take credit for it now. <laughs> and you wrote a book about this. It's called the 15 year journey to financial freedom. Um, one rental at a time. I did. One of the first things I did when I retired February 1st of this year is I spent about four weeks writing and, and ultimately writing was a week. It was editing, which was three weeks, uh, a book. It's only about 80 pages. It's an ebook. Uh, I don't want to print it because I just want to give it away for free. Okay. Um, so I'm, I've, I've sent you a copy. You can send it to anybody you want. If anybody wants it for me, they can just send me an email. Um, I'm just trying to give it away because I want to, I want to show busy professionals that they can at least take a couple of steps to make their financial future, future better. And maybe some, if they invest the time and journey, they can actually get to financial freedom. Because so I only, email? my email is uh, M as in Michael. So M Zuber, Z-U-B-E-R at one rental at a time.com. Okay. So now you're talking about teaching professionals mm -hmm. and you teach them about crap, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, now, listeners are like, I can't believe he said that. But no, I mean, yeah. you're laughing because it's true. It's a great acronym. Tell us about it. Yeah, one of the things that, um, you know, because I, I, as I shared earlier in my, my career, I, I gave presentations and I sold for a living. One of the things you have to do is you have to be a storyteller. And one of the things that you often have to do is you have to shock people. So what I do now is I go up to most of the people I talk to that haven't really done real estate. And I say, you're, you're probably crap. Right. And they get these little funny looks on their face and I go, well, hold on. You're, you're taking it the wrong way. Crap stands for cash, rich asset, poor. Right. And when you sort of step back and go, you know, when you think, when you look at your balance sheet, Mr. Or Mrs. Or whoever, what does it look like? Does it look like you have cash in the bank and a money market account and stocks? Or do you have assets producing cash flow that are indexed for inflation that offer depreciation that mm. offer all these other goodies? Which one do you have? 99 times out of 100, they're like, yeah, I got stocks and some cash. Well, I'm going great. You're crap. Now let's have a conversation about how you get some assets. So, I mean, looking back to my corporate America career, that's what I had. I had Most a of us did. Okay. I had a house I lived in and that's about it. Crap. Yep. Crap. So, and, I had, and I had good income, but I had no net worth at all. Yeah. And contributing 3% into my 401k every year for all those years just didn't work very well. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I live in, again, a part of the world that's kind of a bubble, but I mean, I'm surrounded by people who have paper, paper wealth. Um, we happen to be in a world where the stock market's up and down all the time now to where it can just disappear, which I suffered through 15 years ago. Um, but again, being cash rich for whatever reason, people get comfortable and it's like the security blanket and, Unfortunately, what they don't get is you can't save your way to financial freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has that kind of income. You know, maybe Mark Zuckerberg has that kind of income, but there's like 10 unicorns on the planet that do. The average person like myself could not save my way to financial freedom. I had to do what the rich people do and they buy assets and more specifically buy assets to produce income. In real estate, it happens to be cash flow. Um, so you have to get people to see that. And right now, because the market's up and down, people, some people are going, okay, help me. Well, I'm like, well, get money out of the stock market first. <laughs> get that, get that saved. A lot this week. I mean, it's ironic that we're talking about this. I mean, you know what happened this week. It isn't good again. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. is, it's vulnerable and it's, it's volatile and it's like a roller coaster. Um, yes. So how do you start to teach people about getting out of their crap? <laughs> how, do, how do they start to create that, that mindset that, yeah, I need to buy assets to produce cash flow and give me long-term growth and stuff like that? Yeah. So the first thing I do is I give them the second four-letter acronym, right? So crap is the shock, the, right. you know, you, you just called me what? 
And I go, well, what you want is you want, because I haven't figured out a better one yet. So maybe you or your, or your audience can help me with this. Is I've created one called ARCH because I have, it has to be a word, right? Mm -hmm. So ARCH stands for asset rich, cash happy. I like right? it. Right. So the subtle difference is it, it, I don't preach be cash poor, right? I've seen some people talk about you got to be broke. That's not, that's not okay, right? You got to have reserves and you got to be I'm comfortable. Right you gotta, like yeah, you just, you don't, you don't want that. But you'd also don't want to be, you know, so, you know, cash rich, you have no assets. So you want to be asset rich and, and cash happy. So if you, if I can paint, and actually I have two pictures, right? The two drawings my daughter's, who's an illustrator has done uh, of a pile of crap with money raining on it. And then there's an art, then there's an arch with money raining on it with a smiley face, right? So I got to do is get, if, if you understand this and, and you see this other world, um, we just have to make that connection. And the, and the difference is you have to convert cash to assets. That's the only difference between crap and arch is you have to take some of the cash that's over here when cash rich and convert to assets. And then suddenly you're asset rich uh, and cash happy. So how do you recommend people get started? Cause um, I mean, you're in the technology world and I mean, some people overanalyze stuff to death and never pull the trigger, especially people that are math and science people like myself, by the way. Yeah, no. I had, like um, retrain my brain to invest in real estate. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, well, I think you and I suffered from the same thing. I, I honestly believe for the first five years that if I created the one magic spreadsheet, yeah. all the, I mean, and I'm, I, I'm an Excel wizard, right? And, and yeah. I do crazy things with a spreadsheet. That, that the world, that I would somehow solve the riddle of riddle, real estate. And um, that, that's just not it. Real estate, in my opinion, is a people business. More mm -hmm. specifically, it's, it's, it's all the team members you have to manage it. But actually, the beauty of real estate is the people you're buying from, right? When you're getting started, you have to be able to problem solve. Or you have to be able to identify opportunities for improvement, right? The other thing that's, that most people don't understand about my story is, Everything I bought except for the last year came right out of the MLS. And I'm not talking some specific realtor MLS. I mean like realtor.com, right? I don't have an agent license. I don't have any of that stuff. Yep. Uh, but it was just all out because I got good at reading and understanding uh, where the opportunities were, where maybe you can turn a 3-2 into a 4-2 mm -hmm. or a 2-1 into a 3-1 and these other ways to create value. Oh, you went mute. Yep, sorry. That's okay. Oh, no, that's amazing. So, um, so I agree with all that. You're right. You can overanalyze stuff and you'll never buy a house in your life. And if you make it too complicated, the same thing. So you bought a lot of deals off the MLS. Yep. They're still out there. There are deals in every market. People are still dying. There's still probate. There's still burned out landlords. There's mm. um, issues in life. People lose, still losing jobs every once in a while, even though unemployment's low. People are still getting divorced. Mm-hmm. So there, there are motivated sellers out there. Yep. Um, and I think you're right. If you, if you look for the absolute perfect deal, you'll never find it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect if you're going to buy and hold it for a long time. That's, that's the beauty. That, that one little riddle right there is what most people, they just can't get their head around, right? Because remember what I did, right? That, that first house we bought, we held for three or four years, and then we 1031 that same equity into another building we still own today. There you go. Right. We're not, I didn't, it didn't have to be the best deal ever, but I had to take action. I had to get in the game, right? The spreadsheets that I use now to compare deals are like eight columns, right? You know, I'm trying to figure out how much cash do I have to put down, which is down payment, make ready, closing costs. And then what do I expect it to cash flow a year, right? You do the standard, you know, what, what's the rent minus the expected expenses. And then you take, you take the delta against your cash and it produces a yield. It's that simple, right? It's no longer these three worksheets with multiple columns and all these colors. Um, it's, it's, it has to be simple. Uh, so you you've it. got a lot of videos on your YouTube channel and it's one rental at a time. What, what happens on your YouTube channel? I'm going to go subscribe after we're done here, by the way. Awesome. So what I do there is again, that's, that's the vehicle I've chosen. So, um, one of the things I'll share with you is I retired February 1st of this year and, and thank you. Yay. Um, so the first two days, so like February 2nd and 3rd were awesome. You're telling all your buddies you retired, you're, you're making, you're planning that trip that you always wanted to do. It's, 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 it's wonderful. However, for me, my story, and maybe it's not others, but I, I got depressed like February 4th to like March 15th because I was, I'm at the time I was 45 I'd always thought about retiring at 50. I retired five years early. 
Uh, I didn't have that drive, that success. I was used to being the man, the, running the worldwide team and, and all these things. So I didn't, I, I didn't have a thing to do every day. So I wrote a book. I now have this run, run a lot of time thing that I'm doing that now is the thing that keeps me happy, keeps me motivated. I don't sell anything. I don't do anything. I only create content that's for free. So if you go to my YouTube channel, just a bunch of videos on real estate topics. People ask questions. I respond to them. Uh, I do two different types. I do kind of lecture based, which are just built in PowerPoint. And now I'm starting to do um, what I call real talk sessions where I just hold a phone and I walk my dog, frankly, and I just pick one topic and I hammer on it for three or four minutes. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And again, I already talked about the book one rental at a time. I give it away for free. I am not selling anything. You don't see me I love selling it. Anything. You know, um, and I'm going to start sharing all that content through social media as well. But, you know, financial freedom doesn't mean that you're going to sleep in until 10 o'clock every day. It doesn't <laughs> really, honestly, you know, no, what I, mean? I mean, I yeah. think this is, I fight the same things. No, I'm up at 6 a.m. every day. I, I haven't, got, I haven't w w woken up to an alarm clock right. uh, in, in probably a decade. What I do now, what my day looks like now is I'm up at 6 a.m. between 5.45 and 6.15 every day. Uh, I have a, a cup of coffee or two and just catch up on the news, right? A couple of feeds. I now create at least one video, if not a second one. I then look at real estate for about a half hour. Um, I check out some, some YouTube channels such as yours. And um, then I go to the gym at 9 o'clock. And then I come home, shower, and go to lunch with my wife. And then my day is free to do whatever I want. I knock out most, all of my work and whatnot, except if I'm signing deals or whatever, between 6 a.m. and, and 9 a.m. That's so. awesome. Hey, are you still a landlord? Oh, absolutely. I'll be a landlord for, uh, you know, until I die. And then my daughter will get the estate taxes. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing wrong with being a landlord. Not at all. I, it, it's, do you have any landlording tips? It makes some people nervous. Um, and when I first started to be a landlord, I was in my 20s and did everything wrong. My wife will attest to this. She said, I will never be a landlord again. But <laughs> it took 10 years to get her back in. So getting those landlording skills and systems and processes is yeah. important. So do you have any landlording? Well, there's, yeah, so two things I'll sort of mention. So first and foremost, um, I have paid someone to be a property manager since house one. There you go. Right? My market. My market's two and a half hours away. Um, second, uh, I had to, because I had that busy full-time job with all those air miles and all of that, I only had so many cycles. So I, ch I chose to focus on finding deals and securing capital and I, I outsourced everything else. Good so that's probably the first thing I would tell folks. How is, do you is, find is, a good property manager then? Oh, oh man. Um, I, 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 no, I know the tough questions to ask. <laughs> You do. Um, so <laughs> I, <done> it. <laughs> it, it took six years and I fired six different teams. One thing I would say now looking back is um, I would have eliminated half the teams if I asked this one question. Does the, what does the principal of the property management firm do for a living? Three of the six were real estate agents or brokers and they were in it for transactions. I want somebody who runs a property management firm where the, the, the primary is an investor. And I don't want them owning like two houses, right? I don't want them owning like 50. Right. Uh, that is, that is, you know, if I had to start over again, I would, I would do that first. Great and, and question. That's what I would want. That's the all number right. one thing. All right. No, that's a great question and a great gift. You have to do a YouTube video on how to find a property manager. Now. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to probably go interview my guy now that you've asked that. I'm going to take that action item. Love to see it. All right. No, that's, that's great. So do you think, um, most anybody could do do this if they just start buying one, two, three, four houses a year and just um, hold on to them at some point, they're paid off and you've got financial freedom. And Well, I can certainly say that everybody, everybody, what I'm trying to do now is help people get to four. Why go. four? Because four is really easy to get financed today. And it's a number that most people can wrap their head around. Most yeah. people go, oh my God, 175, I'll never do that. Well, I mean, that's kind of short-sighted, right? I didn't think I'd get there either, but you know, you do the dominoes and you get there. So I talk about four. I firmly believe everybody can get to four. Even if it's one a year, I believe everybody can get to four. And if you just do four and that's, if you do one a year for the next four years, I promise you in 20 years, you'll be in much better financial position. It just, it'll happen. 
So let's say you did that. Let's say uh, let's say you've been by. This is 2018. Let's say you started in 2014. Now you got your four houses. Okay. So you started in 2014. Um, so in the year 2024, mm -hmm. there's a good chance those four houses are paid for or getting close. They'd be very close. They they've also probably doubled, if not right. more. Right, 20 years. Rents yep. are probably up conservatively 50 percent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're, you're in a much better spot, right? You may not be financially free, but I promise you having, you know, what I do now is a lot of guys who have kids, right? Sort of three, four, five years old. I, I tell them point blank, you need to buy a rental house per kid. Right. Why do I tell them that? Because you have 15 years until they graduate high school. And do you want a 529 account or do you want a rental house that maybe is paid That's off? My brother did. Yeah. No, I agree yeah. with that. All right, so you still in, you still enjoy reading? Have you read any good books recently? Um, yeah, I have. Um, I should go get my books. That's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, J, um, I'll, I'll send you an email with the, what the books are, but I, I read all the time. I have two books. One of them now is about apartment syndication because nice. uh, I've never done apartment syndication. I just, I always like to add and grow my skills. It's not necessarily I'm going to do that, but that's one I'm reading. And the other one's about, or it's Ray Del Delino or Del Oh, Delino. it's a great book on principles. Yeah. Principles. That's the one Ooh, black book. That's thick, man. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm about halfway through. That's uh, a I'm long right. read, but there is a lot in that book. That's a great book. I read it early in this year and it took me a long time to get through <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's one part of it that really hit me hard early in his introduction. He, he talked about a time in the economy, I think it was in the 60s, where they had a, it was Nixon, right? He had, he had rising interest rates. He had, um, you know, worldwide strife. Um, you had, you know, the, the, he was going to be impeached, right? It sort of felt like, you know, this kind of environment. So I was like, oh, I want to read that again. What happened in the, what did the dominoes fall? Right. So it was fun to read that. I like the part of the book where he talked about triangulating um, really important decisions, like when he had yeah. cancer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one doctor told him to go this way with the treatment. One doctor said this way. And then he got a third opinion, and then things worked out. So I remember yeah. him talking about like triangulating and getting different opinions. I really yeah, like that book. It was a great book. Yeah, actively seeking out the counter. Yeah. Counterpoint was was yeah, a, no, a great well, catch. So Ray Delano um, was that was a great book. Principles, yep. Well, I want to respect your time. So you've got your website one rental at a time dot com. You got your book fifteen year journey, and then your YouTube channel one rental at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I really love what you're doing as far as like giving back content. Um, Thank you. A lot of people don't give a lot of content for free. Yeah, I see that. And um, I, I'm lucky to be in a, yeah, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be in a situation um, where money's not my main motivator anymore. And um, I'm actually annoyed by some of the things I see online. So, you know, one of the things I'm actually actively working on now is a real estate investing 101. I don't know what you want to call it course or PowerPoint. It's probably going to end up being 50 slides, but it's going to be everything that I would want to know as a 101 mm. investor. And it's, I, it's going to take a while to put together, I'm sure. But, you know, those are things I'm doing, again, entirely free. It'll just be. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> Think about the people you impact, and that'll become part of your legacy along the way, which is, really makes life worthwhile and gives us all purpose to enjoy yeah. freedom. Yeah, it gives me a reason to wake up every day and grind. And, and you know, I could, I could wake up every day and just worry about my next deal, but that's, that's not very fulfilling, frankly. And no, I agree. All right, Michael, I want to respect your time. It's afternoon. So um, I know you're off for the rest of the day. Well, at least <laughs> on the East Coast here. And uh, so I want to thank you for being on the Real Estate Success Podcast and wish you all the best. I'm going to go subscribe to your YouTube channel in a minute. Appreciate and, that. Uh, I will start sharing that content as well. And thanks for connecting to I really appreciate um, your sharing everything from crap to <laughs> freedom and everything in between. So thank you very much. Anytime, Jim. Thanks.